again, folks. Why is it that whenever I have to do something, I always have to mend something before I do it? Surely I can't be the only one that spends all their time mending things. I mean, I'll give you a good example. Uh, I'm going off the beaten track a bit, but the other night I decided to digitise some slides for a film I'm making. I got my little slide drill out that I've had for about 35, 40 euros to check the slides just to choose the ones I wanted. And of course it didn't work. The batteries were all corroded in them like, like everything else. Anyway, so um, I decided I'll put some new batteries in. So I cleaned all the terminals up, got rid of all the corrosion and greens and gunge. I put some new batteries in. Of course, lo and behold, it didn't work. So fair enough, take it apart, see if I can repair it. So uh, I couldn't see a, a fault, but there was a little switch in the bottom and I thought, well, I'll get my test meter out to check the electrical circuit through. So I get my test meter out of the drawer and connect it up, not working. So that's faulty. So I then take the back off the test meter and the battery's corroded in that, would you believe? And uh, so I spent some time cleaning the terminals for the test meter out. I have got other test meters, by the way, but, uh, you know, if i got something faulty, I like to fix it. So... Uh, I spent some time cleaning all the battery terminals out, put a new battery in, still didn't work. Then I noticed a little wire had come off that goes to the battery holder. Well, it was from the battery holder to the actual printed circuit board, so I thought, oh, that needs a soldering iron. So I took it over the garage to solder that up. Well, I got that fixed and uh, got everything going again. I thought, that's that. So I come back in the workshop to do some woodworking project. I can't remember what it was now, because this is a couple of weeks ago. Anyway. I went to my trusty little bandsaw here to use it and I'm in the middle of cutting a piece of wood and all of a sudden, poof, it goes like that. A big pop. Uh, no nothing really that dramatic, but it just packed in. So I thought, oh no, something else to go wrong. So getting back to this, I'm, I don't know why I'm going on about all this because none of it's relevant really. I'll probably cut most of it out in the video. But uh, the bandsaw packed up. So of course I started to take it apart to find the fault and then I thought, when I realised what was wrong with it, I thought, hang on a minute, this is a good idea for a video, isn't it? Because somebody might have one of these, you never know, and they might get a similar fault. So I thought, well, I'll leave it and I'll make a video. So here I am, basically. I'm going to take the bandsaw apart and show you what's gone wrong with it, hopefully. One or two things I should say about this bandsaw. I have got other bandsaws. As you can see over here, I've got a, a large bandsaw here which I use a lot, obviously. But I had this little bandsaw. Um, this one was made in 1983. So he's like, um, what, 37 years old now? With a thin blade in, it's quite useful for doing tight circles and things, whereas my other bandsaw has a, a large sort of blade in it for, for heavy duty jobs. So what I did, I, I fixed up a little platform. I put it on my coronet lathe on this platform. It's just two, two nuts to take off. I can take it off. So even though it's an old bandsaw, it works fine. It's quite good for doing little jobs. Uh, I should say, should say one thing to add. Uh, when I told you that um, I went to use the bandsaw to cut some wood and, and it went pop, uh, I then went into the workshop, uh, the other workshop, um, to use my scroll saw instead to, do the, to finish the cutting off. And lo and behold, I started to switch it on, push the wood through, and the blooming blade snapped on that then. So I thought, oh God, does nothing ever go right? I mean, I just spend all my time repairing things. It's really annoying. I suppose I'm lucky that I can fix them, but uh, I wonder if anybody else has problems like this. I mean, it's the same when I'm doing jobs outside. I've got a little garden tractor and sometimes it'll go wrong and I, I think, oh, the tire's flat. I'll get the pump out and then I try and the pump don't work. Or I've got to jack the wheel up and then the jack's faulty or something. Something snapped on it. There's always something, something to do. I seem to spend all my life fixing and mending things. And if it's not out here, it's the missus in the house, Mrs. Scrimper saying, oh, my Uber's gone wrong. And she's usually picked up something in it and jammed it up or something. I mean, my, my grandson, my, one of my grandsons summed it up um, one time when he was very young, actually. Uh, he said, um, Granddad, you must keep Granny away from all it. Don't let Granny touch anything electrical. Keep her away from all the electrical products because she always breaks them. I mean, she make a wonderful tester for an electrical company, vacuum cleaner tester, because if anybody can reckon, my wife can, I can tell you. But don't tell her I told you that. Anyway, let's get back to the bandsaw because that's what we're here for. So I'll take the front cover off to get to the works. It's just a matter of these three pips here and that whole cover should come off then. 
whoops, oh, one of the pips shot across the back of the workshop, that's good. So I'll put the cover over there. And now you can see the, the works of the saw underneath. What I've done, I've taken the little screws out that holds the switch cover on because that's where the electrical parts are. This is the wires that go down to the motor and you can see the outer casing, even though it's PVC, it's just sort of rotted away and it's coming off and obviously the wires are touched and shorted and it's uh, presumably blown the fuse in the plug, it's only a 13 amp plug. Now first thought was, well I can join these up um, but looking at it, I wonder if the wire, what state the wires are in behind. So I think what I'm going to have to do is take the motor out and rewire it from inside the motor, which looks like a major job. All the wires inside here are corroded away as well. There's a capacitor, by the way, and all these need uh, replacing. So uh, it's going to be a job because the you can see the bare wire here, right where it goes through the side of the machine. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take all this off and possibly take the motor out, take it apart and rewire it in the motor. I think that's the only way I can get round to doing it actually. I've got the bouncer on the bench now. So the first thing I'm going to do is take the table off and get that out of the way. Because it would be easier to work with the table off. Um, oh yeah, it's just two, two big nuts that to come off to take that off. I'll get that out of the way. Right, that's that. I'll put those in the little pot so they'll get lost. And I should be able to take the table off now. I say should. Yeah, there we go. Right, that's the table off. Note those two little spacers that came off. They came off the back of the, the bolts behind the table. I'll put the table over there out of the way. As I mentioned, all the wires, as you can see, are all had it round here. So I've got to replace all these. There's a great... I don't know how that capacitor should come out. Oh, there we go. Look, even the wires to the capacitor are gone on them. Look at that, it's amazing. It doesn't normally happen to plastic. I mean, this is plastic coated wire. I'm surprised at that. I'm going to see if I can take the motor off and rewire it right inside. I think that's the only real way. It appears to be held on by just a couple of bolts, actually. Or, oh, yeah, I think so. Oh, I bet it's going to be awkward. It'll probably be one of the bolts will be behind something so that I'll have to take everything else apart, no, typically. I'll just cut the wires off, ready. They've had it anyway. I'll leave that one a little bit on there so I know that that's where the wiring goes to the capacitor. There's the capacitor, look. Five microfarads. I hope you're still awake, folks. Don't get going to sleep. You might miss something exciting. Well, do you know, folks, it is actually only held on by one bolt, would you believe? That is really weird. The motor's held on by just one bolt. That's a bit of luck. I think it's got this speed adjustment piece here. Uh, which holds it as well, so uh, probably it is just the one bolt on the top and then because it moves at the bottom. This is, this is a speed adjustment knob. I think this will have to come undone to get the motor unit out. Yeah, it's a strange arrangement. Uh, what happens is it, as it uh, tightens up, it pulls the, uh, pulls the thing away and it, the, it's got a large spring here and the pulley is one of those adjustable pulleys and the deeper the bolt goes into the pulley, then the slower the motor will run because it, it's, it's got a smaller size and uh, when it's in this position the belt's fairly tight, uh, the pulley is right at the end here and of course you get a faster speed, I presume that's how it works. So I think I'm going to have to take that, loosen that right off. I that's it. Now if I take that bolt out, hopefully the motor should come out now. Hopefully. <laughs> Things never go as planned though, do they? I'll tell you what, my fingers are freezing cold. It's a very cold day today. We had some snow yesterday and uh, it's very cold and it's cold in the workshop, I can tell you. That bolts, the bolts out. Anyway, I hope you can remember how this all goes back together, folks, because I'm probably going to forget. Oh, that's it. I've got that. Ah, now, I can, now I've got the motor out, look. Well, there's the motor, folks. And here's the wiring that's all corroded lot, as you can see. It's a good job I took it apart, because the wiring's all gone inside the motor as well, I can see now. It's going to have to be all replaced. Yeah, I don't know if you can see on the camera, but down in here, the insulation is perished on there, where it goes into the motor as well, so I'm going to have to take it apart and replace all that, actually. So I've got to get this sleeving off. Well, I've just got the hot air gun on it, and... Uh, 
I'm just warming the sleeve up. It's very cold today, and uh, by warming it up, I should be able to pull the sleeve off. I want to see what the cable's like underneath. One good thing, I can warm my fingers up at the same time, can't I? Because my fingers are freezing cold. I've got these gloves on, but my fingers are still frozen. Anyway, hopefully that should be, I should be able to get that off now. There we go. Oh, look at that. Now you can see, as well as it's uh, it's gone down inside here, it's also all along here. Look, it's completely perished. It's unusual that. I mean, I can understand if it was rubber, but I think this is actually plastic. And I'll have to replace all those cables inside the motor, so I've got to take the motor apart. Well, that's all for part one. In part two, I shall take the motor apart and show you how I repair the faulty wiring and then refit the motor back into the bandsaw and get it working again. So hopefully I'll see you again in part two. Bye for now.